So I'm a bearer. It's biblical. But is it biblical for the church? That's the thing. That's the question that we need to ask. The only thing the doctor prescribes is truth. Welcome back, everybody, to the Prescribing Truth podcast right here on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash prescribe truth. I'm Jamal Bandy. If this is your first time joining me, and if you happen to find this content helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to the side so you just so you can be in tune when I drop new content. And if you happen to listen to this on your podcast apps, because I am available on various podcast apps, please remember to leave a rating and a review as this helps me out a lot. If you'd like to contact me, you can do so by emailing me at prescribed.truth at gmail.com or you can call in at 801-980-6333. If you'd like to support the show financially, please consider doing so at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash prescribed truth. With just a dollar and up, you can really help out the show a lot. Um, different, I have different reward tiers. Try to give back to those who give to me and, and just really just I really appreciate you. So if you want to do that, you can. If not, I appreciate your prayers. So today I'm taking a break and pulling back from the whole social justice and the gospel issue and going into a subject that's near and dear to my heart, um, being as it's something I came out of myself, and that's dealing with um, the subject of armor bearers. You know, I want to talk about what is armor bearer concerning what the scriptures teach and how does that contrast to what some churches do today? Now, I'm aware that this is not an issue that all churches deal with and not even all charismatic churches deal with it. Um, but it is something that I dealt with back in the time when I was in an apostolic Pentecostal type church. And I know that there are people who still have armor bearers today in position. And I want to be able to show what the scriptures teach concerning it. And um, is the practice wrong or right? Um, yeah. So and it's, and you want to think about when you're when you're in church. You want to know what you uh, know what you believe and why you believe it. And when it comes to the practice of your church, you want to know why the thing, why you do the things you do, and what's the biblical basis for it. And so, um, and back in the day when I was about eight years ago, when I was in the church, and probably up until my second time, so not my not the church I was in the cult, but the uh, one after as well, I served as an armor bearer in some in some regard. And only thing that was taught to me concerning armor bearers is that basically, hey. We use the scriptures that show David had an armor bearer and so on and so forth. Elijah or Elisha was an armor bearer to Elisha and so on and so forth. And, you know, basically just this idea of being close to the pastor. Like the armor bearer was the closest one to the pastor outside of the pastor's spouse. And, uh, and I say spouse because in those churches you had women pastors as well, uh, which I no longer agree with. And if you want to talk about that, we can in another video. Um, But yeah, so. Uh, that was the idea. The, the armor bearer was closest to the pastor, closest spiritually and dealing with prayer and so on and so forth. So you had other members in the church who would pray for the pastor, but it was the armor bearer's prayer that kind of just went that extra mile for the pastor. And that's what we were taught and that's how we were trained. Um, now, I realize that some people may train differently concerning that topic, and I'm open for that. And maybe you can share your experiences as well concerning the subject. Um, but I am going to go off of what I've seen and off of what I've gone through as well. But i um, just going to appeal to the scriptures to see what is true concerning what an armor bearer is. Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to look at the text. I'm going to go to the eSword app. And I, I pulled up um, just verses that just deal with armor bearer. You know, and I, and I put them all in one. And so we're going to look at all, we're going to look at a lot of scriptures that just deal with armor bearers. And, um, I'm not going to pull these in context as far as what they did and how they operated alongside um, their leaders. You're going to show the scriptures that show that Amma Bear is there in the scriptures, and as far as um, a little bit of what what they did and what it like and what Amma Bear means in the Hebrew or in the Greek, because uh, you know in the Old Testament you had the Greek Septuagint, so that's that. All right, that should fit. I think that should be fair enough. All right, so now I want to, one thing I want to make clear is that when it comes to armor bearers, there is no reference to armor bearer in the New Testament. And there's a reason for that. Uh, if, whatever time you're going to see things dealing with armor bearers, it's going to be in the Old Testament. All right. It's going to be in the Old Testament. That's, that's an important to note. And so now let's look at this. Let's look at the scriptures that show where armor bearers are. 
So the first we're going to look at real quick, the very first one that shows up. And so I'm guessing this is the very first time the word I'm a bear shows up in the scriptures. This is Judges 9.4. All right, it says, Then he called quickly to the young man, his armor bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, lest they say of me, a woman killed him. And his young man thrust him through, and he died. A very dark verse to start off with as we talk about armor bearers, but we see how dependent um, the leader was of, of his armor bearer and how important the armor bearer was. This is the closest person to the leader. And so, um, now, nine out of ten, you see armor bearers, you see armor bearers dealing with kings, those who's heading off an army. And so, in this particular instance, um, this king, you know, is about to die. And he says to his armor bearer, kill me. He, he doesn't want to be disgraced. And, and, you know, and so what happened with this particular king is that he died from an, um, I want to say it was from an arrow. And so, you know, from a, it was from a distance. It wasn't from anything uh, up close. And so he wanted his armor bearer to basically finish him off. And so that's what he did. And so um, that's that. So we see armor bearer there. Now, before we go any further, we're going to look at what an armor bearer is. Like, what is that word there? And so. Um, we pull that up for a second. So when we look at the word armor bearer, in the Hebrew, the word is kel e or kel li. And that's my best way I can pronounce it in the Hebrew. And it basically means something prepared, that is any apparatus as an implement, a utensil, type of vessel or weapon, and or armor so armor bearer, artillery, bag, carriage. So basically the armor bearer was basically a person who carried the armor or they bear the sword. Of their person, they their leader, you know that's that's basically it. You know they they had they carried their armor, you know uh, they carried what they needed. Um, actually, on um, the Greek Septuagint is very interesting, and um, I'm gonna show that I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that real quick for you guys. Uh, it shows the word as being uh skyus or skyus. Oh, I I can't pronounce it. I'm just probably butchered that word. Um, but it says. Of a uncertain affinity, a vessel, implement, equipment, or apparatus, literally or figuratively. And then it says specifically as a, a wife as contributing to the usefulness of her husband. And, or goods, sales, stuff, vessel. So the fact that this will be uh, specifically a, a wife as contributing to the usefulness of her husband, we should be able to see how close, how deeply close the armor barrel is to his leader. All right. And so, um, that's one thing to note here. And so in this particular verse, this armor bearer is somebody who basically the, the, the leader trusted to finish them off. All right. First um, Samuel 14, 7. It says, and his armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you, heart and soul. Once again, another scripture to show how close an armor bearer was to that leader. 1 Samuel 14, 12, and the men of the garrison held Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, come up to us and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, come up after me for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Then Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer killed them after him. The armor bearer handled business. You see that the armor bearer took care of business. Now we're going to, yeah, let's go to the next verse. All this is in Samuel. And that first strike, which Jonathan and his armor bearer made, killed about 20 men within, as it were, half a furrow's length of an acre of land. So Jonathan and the armor bearer just went in on folks. All right, so we see the role of the armor bearer. This was somebody who went alongside the leader in battle. With Jesus. Now, that's the thing. So, uh, Prodigal Son by Grace says Peter was Jesus' armor bearer. He tried to take a dude's head off, but missed and got his ear. So, now that's the thing. So, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that Peter was Jesus' armor bearer, and this is why. Though the though the um though they had weapons, though Peter had weapons, obviously we see that they they carry weapons. Um, they could defend themselves and so on and so forth. The the one who the armor bearer was one who bared the armor or who carried the armor of the leader, and so Jesus never had never required it of his disciples. 
And, that, and that's the thing. That was a very interesting thing. He said, you had all of this going on as far as the Old Testament goes, but then you get it anew and you have the Messiah come. Though their disciples wanted to protect Jesus and wanted to stand up for him and wanted to fight the battle for him, Jesus always told them no. Amen. That's why, and probably somebody read says, that's why Jesus said, put the sword away. Like, yeah, so like this wasn't, the battle was, is never with flesh and blood. So what armor bearers used to be back then or how they would fight for their king back then, that wasn't the case here, you know, because Jesus always said, "This is not, this is not my world. This is not, this is not where um my kingdom is," and so, or that's what he told Pilate. If it were, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't have him in prison. And so, um, is so it was interesting. What an armor bearer was back then, Jesus didn't even have an armor bearer. He didn't, he didn't need one. Didn't require one. And then on top of that. The apostles after Jesus didn't have armor bearers. And I'm kind of jumping the gun a little bit, but you pushed me, a part of son by grace, and I appreciate that. Like that's a good point to bring out because somebody will argue that. I know people who would argue that and say that, hey, Peter was Jesus' armor bearer because he, you know, so he had a sword, he bared a sword, and he would he's ready to go to battle for Jesus. But Jesus didn't want that. But see, it was the job of the armor bearer in the Old Testament to do that. And if they didn't do that, if they didn't, if they weren't ready to defend, they weren't ready to fight, then they wouldn't be in that position, you know? And so, to the point I was going to bring up is uh, every time you see an armor bearer here, it's related to a leader who is going to battle or is prepared for battle. The armor bearer was the one who had prepared the things that the leader needed in order for battle. So, you now in, in the churches, this would coincide with what I served as, what other people served as, we would be ones who would carry the sword, the word of God, right? We would carry the sword of our pastor and everything. If he needed a sword, we had a sword with, with us so we could hand it to him so he can preach the word, right? If we, and he needed a sweat towel because, you know, he he's a white sweat off his brow. And so we carried the towel for him. You know what I'm saying? If he's uh, he, he going to change clothes and everything else, if he's going to get ready to go into work, get, go into spiritual warfare, we finna um make sure we carry his robe and carry it, you know, carry his belongings because he need to make sure he get dressed and have his vestments and all that stuff put up. And so we're gonna have all that stuff for them. And that's what we did. You know, so that was the the role of the armor bearer in the old testament as far as carrying the armor and the vestments that the um leader would need. So in the church, that's what we would do for our pastors. Now, so armor bearer is biblical, but is it biblical for the church? That's the thing. That's the question that we need to ask. Yes, armor bearers are biblical, right? They existed. It's a real position for an army. For those who are in battle, for the king, he had an armor bearer, one who was close to him and that carried a sword, that carried a shield, that, you know, and had their own sword. They were ready for battle. You know, um, they, they was prepared. You know, they had that. But is it biblical for the church? That is the question. So now there are some implications of this that I want to get into for the church. I, I'm going to read, um, I want to say, I want to read one more verse. Okay, yeah, I'm going to read this verse here. No, I'm going to go, yeah, go verse 4. Saul, yeah, 1 Samuel 31, 4. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, after battle, Saul basically lost. You know, he's going to die. He says, he said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and mistreat me. But now notice how the first armor bearer we looked at, hey, he had no business. The, the king, the leader said, finish me off. They said, cool, I finish you off. This armor bearer was different, but his armor bearer would not, for he feared greatly. He feared greatly. He had, he had reverence for Saul and also knew that Saul was God's anointed it. You know, at the time, so hey, he feared greatly. He didn't want to kill the king. Therefore, Saul took his own sword and fell upon it. So, so Saul finished himself off. And so, um, and when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell upon his sword and died with him. The armor bearer committed suicide. And it sounds all poetic. That's what happened. The armor bearer committed suicide. He killed himself. Um, he saw his saw his leader was gone. He too died. Now we think about armor bearers, right? Think about armor bearers as far as what armor bearers did and how close they were to their leaders. And you say you want that in your church, and you say you're that for your pastor. 
All right. So <clears throat> how how what are we saying when we say that uh there's one thing to carry to carry something for somebody, you know, and, and have things ready for them and wanting and wanting to serve them. Cool. Fine. You know, but how far are you to go with that as far as being a biblical armor bearer if you're going to go by the scripture? These armor bearers, one, when they saw their spiritual leader or their leader about to die, they asked to be finished off. They finished them off as a mercy. They didn't kill themselves afterwards. You know, they finished them off. This armor bearer, he loved this leader. He feared greatly. He knew that he was somebody that God appointed or God put or God allowed to be king and so on and so forth. And he says he wouldn't do it because he feared greatly. Yet when he saw his leader die, he died alongside with him. Uh, how deep is that for our for your leader, for those who serve as Amma Bear? Because I tell you, when I was Amma Bear, we were willing to fight for our pastors and we were willing to die for our pastors. And you say, well, Jamal, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it was very crazy. It was idolatry. But that was the truth. You know what I'm saying? And if he fell off, when I when that when in the cult that I was in, when our pastor died, we all like everybody like kind of like spiritually died. And even though like technically we're all spiritually dead until the Lord makes us alive. But after that happened, shoot, it's like what we do now. Just like this, I'm a bear felt. Leader's dead. I don't know what to do. Can't go forward. And that's how we felt because we were so tied to our leader, you know, especially as you were armor bearer, you know, it just felt that way, you know. Um, so, yeah, so something to think about concerning what the Bible says concerning armor bearers. Now, in the New Testament, stressing once again, there's nowhere in the New Testament that there was an armor bearer for a leader in a church. But also in the Old Testament, you don't see an armor bearer for those who served in the temple. Particle Son by Grace makes a point. He says, if a pastor is supposed to be a shepherd, isn't he supposed to take care of the flock? Yes. Yes. And so you think about it. If a if the pastor is the under shepherd and he has sheep under him, which one of the sheep is able to be able to one to be able to, to carry the um the stuff for the for the shepherd? And where do you see ever a sheep carrying anything for a shepherd or doing anything like that for a shepherd? You don't. Sheep are led by a shepherd. And the shepherd takes care of the sheep, you know. So, and so, in back, if you're, the issue I have with this is because you're taking this stuff out of context. The issue of armor bearer is taken out of context from what the scripture teaches. An armor bearer was never meant to be the armor bearer to somebody who served in the teaching of God's word or any of that. It was dealing with war, battle, real battle, real blood, guts, and sweat and tears battle. You know, like out there fighting on the front lines. That's what this was about. This is what armor bearers were used. Now, I know some people out there were like, well, we fighting a spiritual battle. Oh, we fighting a battle of war. Well, how does God tell us to fight those battles today? In, in, in spiritual warfare, we're talking about spiritual warfare. How does God tell us to fight those spiritual battles? I mean, he definitely doesn't tell me that I take up the sword for my neighbor. I mean, I pray for my, my brother in Christ and my leaders. That God tells us, pray for our leaders. Pray for our elders and so on and so forth. So we're praying for them, A, B, and C. But is it one person that's designated to be the, the one who's closest to the leader to pray for them? Is that what the Bible teaches concerning spiritual warfare and how we war in the spirit with one another in the body of Christ? No, it doesn't. Nowhere. But that's what's being taught. And honestly, what this, what this sows into your congregation is a level of pride and also a level of resentment. Very deep, maybe very low, but it's there. Reason why. You have one person who's singled out as being the one who's the top. They're top of the rest of the flock. So you got the rest of these sheep, but this is the one top sheep. And that one type sheep, that one top sheep is the one who can pray for the pastor. I remember being in a time when I was I'm a bear where the pastor, he was he was so called like so deep in the spirit and he all worn out and he needed energy. Nobody else could pray for the pastor except the armor bearer. Armor bearer was the one who goes and prays. Nobody else, nobody else prayers will work. Nobody else could go and just you know lay their hands on their pastor and just pray. Just pray God to give them strength. That's the only thing that, the only thing the armor bearer is praying. The only thing they're praying is God give them strength. Oh, give them strength, God. Lord, help them. You know, that's the only thing you're praying. You telling me 
You telling me Joe in the back can't pray that? You know, your armor bearer is the only one who can pray that prayer, right? Oh, they got the anointing, right? Now, that's another subject for another day. Don't get me started. And so, like, this is the issue. That's the issue. It, it, and then, so you got people looking on who's like, man, people in the back, I'm praying for pastor, praying for pastor. But they know it's only the armor bearers that's, that's getting close because that's what's taught. You know, and, and that, that just shows a lot of bad, bad theology and understanding within your congregation. You know, and a lot of false expectations concerning your armor bearer. Prodigal Son by Grace says, found this quote, found this good quote. We give the help that pastors need for burdens they must bear when we entrust them to the Lord and hold them up in prayer. And that, and that quote came from uh, D.D. Han. Or is it the Han? I don't, I don't know. I probably messed his name up. But yeah, that's exactly right. That's what we do. And we uphold our leaders in prayer. That's what we do. We give them to the Lord. But that don't have to be just one person who does that. The whole congregation does that. It's supposed to do that. So the idea of an armor bearer in your church service and the way that you're doing it is unbiblical. It's unbiblical. Um, it, it, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, you're not out there fighting a war. You know, it is a spiritual war, but God has already given us everything we need to fight that spiritual war within ourselves. Matter of fact, your pastor don't need the armor bearer. He has the same thing. If he's a believer, a born again believer in Christ, he has the same thing every other believer has. He doesn't have anything more special than the rest of us got. He got the same, he got the same equipment, the same armor that we all bear to fight these spiritual battles. You know, so uh this is this is something that needs to be really looked at, you know, uh, really considered. For those of you who are in churches that are like this, please consider what's being said. Please consider. I know this may hurt because you're because just like the armor bearers had a his heart and soul for that leader, you may feel that way about your pastor. And you know, and there's nothing wrong with loving your pastor, but it gets so bad when it's idolatry. Look at the armor bearer who gave his life, who who basically killed himself because he saw Saul die. And whether that be because of guilt, because he felt like he shouldn't have saved him, or what case may be, he felt like his life was worthless because Saul died. Look at the other bearer who basically thrust his leader through. You know, they requested it was an act of mercy, but he did what he had to do. You know, saying, is this is what we're is this is what you're teaching to your your leaders of this is what or your leaders are asking of you? You know, think about these things. And so, um, yeah. So this comes from a place that I you know this this comes from a a, a place that I feel strongly about uh, because it's what I came out of. This is what I participated in. And I know, I remember how I felt concerning my pastor, you know, how deep I was, how, how bad I was willing to go to war for my pastor. So I understand. I do understand, but it's not biblical and it should be avoided. Who? Who? Nowhere in the New Testament. Nowhere. Nowhere in the New Testament that anybody served as an armor bearer for anybody. Nowhere. All right. So uh, even in the Old Testament, nowhere where any Levitical priest um, had an armor bearer, nowhere. All right. So um, you want to think about that, consider that. And I hope that been helpful. Um, I wasn't trying to be long. Just wanted to share that with you. So hit me up if you have an issue with this, if you want to communicate with me about this, if you want to talk to me about this, feel free to email me or call in however feels good for you. I'm open for it. And I'm down for it. Thank you once again for joining me for another episode of Prescribing Truth Podcast. Please remember to check out more videos of Prescribed Truth on the side. And remember, in a world full of errors, the only thing the doctor prescribes is truth. Blessings.